Many people have concerns about the environmental impact of life. The fossil fuels we burn to build things, to go places, heat and cool our homes, and grow food. But what about the environmental impact of dying? What we do with our bodies and the bodies of our loved ones at the end of life has environmental consequences too. And more people are asking questions and making informed choices about what happens to their bodies after death. After all, you have to do something, and cultures have taken different approaches. Burial in graveyards, funeral pyres, and body composting, to name a few. Flame cremation has become the most popular means of body disposal in the U.S. and in many countries of the world. The interior of the chamber is heated by flame to between 800 and 1,000 degrees Celsius. It takes about two to three hours to drive off all the water and incinerate the human body, leaving behind bone fragments, which are ground up and returned to the family. Cremation has a downside. The combustion process creates greenhouse gases. Crematories burn fossil fuels, usually methane, and create carbon emission that contribute to climate change. But there are alternatives. Water cremation, also known as resumation and aquamation, uses hydrolysis to break down the body. Promoters of water cremation claim that the process has a 75% lower carbon footprint than flame cremation. Water cremation is carried out in a steel pressure tank large enough to hold a person. The tissues of the body won't spontaneously break down in water. An alkaline or basic solution has to be used, typically 5% potassium hydroxide in water. The solution also has to be heated to 150 degrees Celsius. The human body is mostly water to begin with, about 60% by weight. A healthy adult is about 16% protein, 16% fat, 6% inorganic minerals, bones and teeth, and 1% carbohydrates. The alkaline solution chemically reacts with the proteins in muscle, skin, bone, and other tissues. The peptide bonds are cleaved, giving amino acids and peptide fragments. The triglycerides of fat and the phospholipids of cell membranes are hydrolyzed, giving phosphate, glycerol, and fatty acid salts, or soap. The insoluble materials of the teeth and bones do not react. The hard mineral of the teeth and bones is called hydroxyapatite and is composed of calcium, phosphate, and hydroxide. Water cremation destroys pathogenic bacteria and viruses. All your genetic information stored in DNA is destroyed as well. After several hours of heating, the tank is allowed to cool. All that's left is a dark-colored sterile solution, which can be safely disposed of in a sewer. And white bones, which can be pulverized. The powder can be safely returned to the earth, kept by the family, or even turned into a piece of jewelry. Water cremation may or may not be available where you reside. There are 28 states in the U.S. and several provinces in Canada which have legally authorized water cremation. These regions are colored green. Six other states in the U.S., shown in yellow, are considering legislation to legalize the process. However, even if it is allowed in your area, there may be no providers at this time. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Science Sketch.